Welcome to the WT FFF 3D Printing Podcast, all about the what of fused filament fabrication. Today, designers and hosts Tom and Tracy Hazard are live from South by Southwest with digital disruption expert Jay Salmon. So if you start looking at yourself differently and you see how malleable you are, then you can see how, how easy it is to change the world. Wow, and, and for th those out there looking at 3D printing, because that's you know, obviously what our focus is here, that's 320 million jobs estimated as being lost around the world in manufacturing. I mean, that's significant, and a f I, think the, I think the number's a little low, but it said 15% of retail would disappear as well. I think it's gotta be higher than that. I, 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 I um, just had dinner with somebody who is a manufacturer in Asia who's well known that has one million employees in their factories. And he was telling me that they now have five factories that they call Lights Out. And I'm like, ooh, they work in the dark. It sounds so cool. No, Lights Out means there's not a single human in the factory. And they're... It doesn't need light. <laughs> right. And so they're looking to, you know, expand that number rapidly. And they're the largest manufacturer in the world. So it's coming. But the flip side is there's huge opportunity. So my talk tomorrow is, you know, augmented reality, you know, uh, job killer or economic savior. And so disruption, for anybody, if you get one thing out of this talk or one thing out of Disrupt You, the book, disruption isn't about what happens to you. It's about how you respond to what happens to you. You always have a choice. And so you can make those choices. So in 3D printing, we now get to a customized world, a bespoke world. And anybody that isn't setting up their supply chain to be digital, to respond to those demands, to allow people to have input into the products they want, will be cannon fodder. Yeah, you know, it's been a lot slower. This is, when we started the podcast three years ago, this was kind of our focus. We were wondering whether or not there was a market for those products because that's what we do. Tom and I are product designers. We've designed products for mass market retail for 20... 25 years, oh God. I Too many, I don't like to think about it. How old I am? 25 uh -huh. years. And so we've done things that you buy every day at Costco and Walmart and Target. And, and we look at that and we want to be on the edge. So we, we got in very early in 3D printing to sort of explore that. But what we found out really quickly was that there wasn't a market for our skills yet and there wasn't a market for our products yet because it was, uh, you know, lots of resistance and friction along the way, which I'm sure you're <laughs> looking at what happened with Sony. There's a lot of resistance in that retail market in because they're all invested in inventory and warehousing and their trucking or whatever their specialty is, supply chain, all of those things. There's a lot of investment in there. So the resistance to change. So when there isn't an investment in the digital good side of things, the design of those digital products don't exist today. They exist in some formats, but not in all products. And when they don't exist, it's hard to imagine a world at which you can provide them. So there's been this slowdown of, of adoption into what we would call retail reality. There used to be a strategic advantage of having the, owning the means of production. So if you had the biggest factory you could make, and I, I talk about the example of, of motor oil. Um, anybody old enough to remember motor oil coming in round cardboard tubes mm. that you stab with the knife and, and when you open the second we're, can we're it's slippery enough. and you stab yourself. <laughs> we're old enough obviously we're like Thank nodding you. over here. <laughs> um, the dumbest product in the world but Quaker State had the biggest factory could, could make out more cans than anybody else nobody could touch them in price. They weren't going to build a new factory they put all their money into their factory and then Pennzoil made a little plastic bottle and then because they could make plastic any shape they made it in a shape that they could get two bottles in the space that it took on the shelf to put one of those round things. Suddenly, sales took off, and they ended up buying their competitor. So the, the lesson there today is the advantage isn't the means of production. The only advantage any company has today is the speed of which they can react to their consumer data. Insights are the difference in the advantage that you have. And if you're not doing it, uh, Zara, one of the biggest uh, retailers out there, changes virtually all their inventory every 10 days. Many of their competitors are set up with the, here's our season, here's what we're doing for this line for the fall or the spring or next year or two years from now. That doesn't work anymore. 